I thought you were just doing it at Paul's legs, no. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your input. I'm sure, I'm sure there's lots of people who have more things to say. Being Irish, we have lots of things to say. Uh, uh, to call out um, what, uh, what people have shared with them. Just so our, our guests online get to hear it, I'm, uh, I'm maybe going to ask you to pass the microphone around. Okay? So what I'll ask our other students to do is, if you hear uh, somebody calling out a principle or a good practice that somebody has liked, maybe you put a tick up beside it. You know, we probably can't quite do the big th Facebook thumbs up, but you could put a tick beside it if you, if you hear um, something called out that reflects something on your page. Okay. So, we might go to Duncan first. Okay. So, first mention was in reference to the dew marring out in the woods. And it was just to use the, the pulley system to its full mechanical advantage. Maybe because we're all quite able bodied that we take granted how strong we are. So, to add more pulleys into it, it would make it easier for somebody else. And um, an overall comment for the day was that the, all the things we had done were quite inclusive. They were good for mixed abilities. Everybody's and mixed ability uh, groups could do it. Um, someone commented about the use of smell being used as a sense in the outdoors. It's so rarely used, but it's just such a, a powerful, evocative sense. And that was good too. Um, someone asked, was there more hashing symbols? So could you add in a bit more complexity to it for different groups? Um, I've only done a little bit of looking into hashing, and there seems that there is more symbols you can add in, but uh, just to have a look online probably. Um, and then someone else mentioned how just the value of the outdoor environment, uh, particularly the natural environment, it's, it's such a small area that they're quite right in that we're close to a road, there was tires and pads around, but we're still amongst the trees, there was pine cones, there was birds, and just not to, uh, not to underestimate, a small patch of wood like that is a really powerful resource. Okay, so um, some different things here, obviously. Uh, we did have a great one at the start, but I'm not going to go through it because it was transferred to the astro side. So uh, we'll go to that later. Um, someone suggested the props were a great idea with the goggles, and they're going to try it next weekend with their kids just to, to simulate visual impairments to s give them an idea of what it's like. Uh, a great one was the add-on learning that you can take uh, from doing an activity, and I think it was specific to uh, being in the woods uh, around multi-sensory. So, Whatever your goal is, whether it's string orienteering or a game, there's a lot of add-on learning to be had in terms of being out in nature and smelling the wood and the texture and all the, 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 the things that go with multi-sensory. Um, and a great quote there was, sure, look, just being in the woods. Everyone loves the woods. I can't disagree with that, I don't think. Uh, be creative when adapting equipment. Absolutely, we spoke about that several times, about just being creative, your own creativity, and don't be afraid to think outside the box. Stay open-minded. Uh, with the stringo, specifically, someone mentioned not, not everything, everything is about, about competition. Um, it's progressive. So it doesn't have to be a competition. It doesn't have to be competitive or who's a winner, did I come first? But so long as it's about being progressive, and perhaps someday it might be about competition, if that's what the individual wants. Thanks. Um, they mentioned the string orienteering was a very good activity at all levels, um, from competition and leisure, so it's right through. Uh, it's a very good unsupported activity, and um, I think the last comment is about the string orienteering as well. Yeah. The, the guide through the turf was great. I didn't feel the distance or insecurity. Answering orienteering as well, that it was maybe perhaps put brain on the markers that they should kind of have a feeling for it and really put in a button on the screen or just have it that it's attached to the pipe or whatever it is that's there. Um, use pictures on the control. So there's kind of a, a couple on, on this one. It could be that they take a picture off and it makes a bigger picture at the end, or it could be, as Shane said, you had like little teddies hidden somewhere and you have to associate it to where they are around them. So you don't see the teddy on the picture by your lock and not that lock there. So um, you can use it like that. On the, on the string, so you could use bells. It's not all about having nice paper boxes that are a little bit expensive, so you just throw the, the bells on it, or even just as basic as rice in the bottle that when they, when they touch off, that it, it makes them sort of a nice. So you don't have to, you know, go expensive. And then perhaps different textures. 
uh, or, th or thickness of the rope. Sometimes that uh, the comment was that the, the yellow string is a little bit monotonous, so it's kind of, you know, it's something too exciting about it. So if you can incorporate um, a thin rope to a thick rope or um, to kind of like a fluffier rope, it might indicate like a downhill or an uphill or, you know, that kind of way. So if you could kind of just incorporate it that way. So that was that. Right. Thank you. Um, so one of the comments for our session was that it was people-centered. It was all about the, the person and not the disability. Uh, other one was that the inclusive teamwork for both people with disabilities and people without disabilities. Um, in terms of the activities of the tasks, adapting uh, thinking outside of the box, how can we adapt it for the clients or the people that we're working with at that particular time? Um, adapting your teaching style or your instructing style. Paul Partol, as you know, Professor Lieberman mentioned earlier, and different, different ways of doing that. And the social story of why are you doing it? What's the outcome that you're looking for from, for the participants and how you're going to achieve that? But then also the, like, the social, on, social interaction for everybody while you're doing something. Um, I suppose we were, uh, the first thing on, on this poster was the idea of a uh, twister board or coloured joint Jenga, so that each Jenga piece would have um, a colour on it. You'd have like a twister dial, so when the colour, say red comes up, you have to take out or push out a red um, thing on the Jenga. So that's just a take on, on the joint Jenga game. Um, just maybe when, I think this was more prevalent with the wheelchair users, that um, maybe people need to be aware of, their, uh, just have an awareness of their positioning. So one of the guys was saying when he was sitting in the wheelchair and somebody was talking, they were looking straight up into the sun, um, and just that the level of conversation happened to be at that height rather than at wheelchair height. So I it was. And uh, one of these was, um, one of the other things that came up was the use of ordinary language. So you just, you just kind of speak as though you normally speak rather than trying to adapt your, your language to, to say, oh, wheel over there, or walk over there, or whatever. Um, with this one then, it was just actually using a wheelchair in, in, in the day, just to actually sit in and, and just put yourself into that position for a little bit, just to feel the, how, the mobility of it. Um, one of the things that came up about uh, the actually organizing the games or, or designing games is that maybe people should sweat a bit, that inclusive, challenge, inclusive games don't need to be watered down in terms of physical challenge, that they can actually be, make people sweat a little bit or there's a bit of challenge to them. And, um, uh, the, yeah, the same sort of thing, that the expectation doesn't need to be low, that maybe just including may not necessarily be enough, that you're actually trying to set a level, a, a goal, or a, some challenge. Thanks, Shane. Uh, give him a round of applause. They had two posters in their group. Well done. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just to finish with my one there, um, I suppose if we could try and step back from our normal uh, role as an instructor, um, and to focus on letting the group do. Um, because maybe sometimes, if we're not getting the outcome that we want, the tendency is for us to jump in and to fix it for the group. Uh, and that's quite a challenge for us as an instructor, just to, to step uh, back and let that happen. So to be maybe more process focused than outcome focused. Um, so I suppose that follows into the second one there, think about mo more about empowering the group. Um, then we looked at the importance of review tools and a lot of the time we focus on the review tool that we're going to use with the group but maybe for ourselves as well particularly if this is a new area of work for you you might be really good at the planning and the doing phase with but to step back yourself then and to reflect on your own performance and see as there are things that you have learned yourself as we're doing here now to improve uh, the next day that we go out um, I suppose in Ireland, when we first came onto this course, we suffered a little bit around the language at European level. Uh, in other countries, they call us animators. Uh, in Ireland, we tend to call ourselves in inst instructors. But maybe in this area of work, maybe we should consider ourselves more facilitators of activity so that we're not you know, really leading it in a, a very strong way, that we're literally just setting up the environment, the equipment, and getting the people there, giving them minimal information and letting them you know, uh, lead the activity themselves. And uh, finally, then, I have to credit Orla with the last one here. She made me do that, uh, that she really liked the adaptation on the spider's web today and the goal. She hadn't seen it done that way before, so thanks a lot for that.
Okay. Um, so thanks very much to everyone here for contributing to that and for, for capturing it. Um, just one thing I didn't mention about the simulations in our training program today, we, we, we put in simulations. And simulations can be really useful, but also they can be kind of controversial as well around disability. So it's important to, to look at it from both sides. Um, you know, to sit in a wheelchair for 10 minutes uh, on the AstroTurf isn't to share the experience of somebody who maybe exists with a lot of pain in their life every day, maybe meets a lot of um, um, maybe uh, all sorts of challenges in physically getting around, challenges in terms of people's attitudes to them. Uh, so simulations are um, uh, maybe to be treated warily. I had hoped actually to have um, a number of the participants who come to our um, adapted programs to come and speak about their experiences as well. And certainly, if you're doing that in your own communities, I'd, I'd highly recommend it um, to get somebody to speak about what it is like to, to engage in these activities from their perspective and to do that in tandem with, with simulations. So from any of the ideas that have been shared here or any of the things today, does anyone have any extra comments or any questions they'd like to ask at this stage? There was a nice session at the Karen, can I just throw that to you just so our lads online can hear you as well? <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Are you there? Uh, just there was another session. I couldn't feel it from the paper there, uh, adapting equipment. Mm. There was a canoe and just showing how simple things were. Mm. A lot of times people think they have to get hoists and they talk about funding and, oh, we need to get special chairs and special this and special that. So it's really shown simple adaptions, which um, I just missed, but I would like to commend you on, on showing that. And just one other thing uh, um, that I don't think we covered, but I heard a few comments on it throughout the different sites, just about with people with physical needs and lifting them, and it was a, like a taboo or don't lift them, don't. And a, again, it goes back to the person. You know, that, that individual may be able to do a lot themselves. They may be able to guide people. So it's something as well that we, I suppose in time we can add in as a, a, a formalized session. Thanks very much, Kieran. Does anyone have any other comment they'd like to add? Lauren. This is more just like a comment of something I was thinking about. And I know a lot of you are doing activities where you're promoting people with disabilities to get out into the communities. And what I noticed in our country is that because people with disabilities were in segregated schools for so long, people didn't see them out in the community. So people have very limited expectations of what people with disabilities can do. And the more we keep doing what we're doing and get people out into the community and doing a lot of the outdoor adventure activities that people think they can't do, we're going to change the way people think about them. And I just want to applaud everybody because we're all making a lot of efforts and energy and, and putting our time and energy into a, such a great energy in this group that we're going to change the way people think about people with disabilities and make the world a better place for them. So I just want to thank Tomas and everybody for, for putting on this conference because we're making a big difference. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.